What's up, Model Squad? MOB back with another Division 2 video. So, I did a poll on my community tab and asked you guys what was your favourite gun type in the Division 2. A vast majority of you guys voted for the assault rifle, so today's build will be based around a specific assault rifle. An assault rifle I've used quite a lot lately and highly recommend using, that being the exotic AR the Chameleon. Along with the Chameleon, we had to bring back the four piece negotiator's dilemma. In my last negotiator's build, I used the SMG and went full glass cannon. It was an all or nothing build, which was a great build, but it wasn't for everyone. In today's build, we'll have the damage and the survivability to go with it. With all the buffs active, you're looking at 220% critical hit damage, 60% crit chance and 181% weapon damage. When it comes to the survivability, we'll be using the Bloodsucker talent, which can allow us to get 100% bonus armor on kill. This talent combo has become by far my favourite to use when it comes to speedrunning missions. I will be leaving a Lincoln Memorial speedrun at the end of the build breakdown for those of you who want to see a full run. Before we get into the build breakdown, I just want to have a quick talk about talents, well, weapon talents, mainly because lately I've been using the exotic assault rifle, the chameleon, and I've had a few people in the comment section saying why use it, it's trash, and other assault rifles and talent combos do so much more damage. Now let it be known, I test my builds for a good few days before I decide to post them, I spend a lot of time in the shooting range and running missions, and I found a chameleon when all its buffs are active does way more damage than say an M4 or for mass with killer, strained, optimist or close and personal. It offers 90% weapon damage and 50% critical hit damage for 45 seconds on top of all your damage you have on your build, which is insane. Also, when you go out of combat, you keep the talent and it restarts the 45 seconds when you get back into combat. So if you can shred through parts of a mission in less than 45 seconds, you can hold the bus throughout the whole mission. Overall, I feel the Chameleon's talent is way better than talents like, like Close and Personal, Killer, Strained and Optimist. It offers a lot more damage and the buffs last a lot longer as well. The only real downside is building up the stacks to gain the damage buffs, but if you play smart, have good aim, it won't be a problem. So to those in the comments, please do your testing before you comment or at least do a bit more research, work out your maths a bit better instead of trying to downplay my builds. So now I've spoken on that and you've seen a little bit of what this build is capable of, let's get into the build breakdown. Right guys, so I'm going to start off with the specialization just because I keep using a gunner and it's been a while since I explained why. So for those of you who are wondering why, to those of you who are new to the channel, I use a gunner because you get 10% armor on kill. You also get every third reload is 50% faster. The armor kit gives you 30% bonus armor. You also get access to the Banshee Pulse, which is great again for this build as well. You also get 10% of total ammo capacity every 60 seconds, so you're never running out of ammo. I think maybe one time in the whole time I've been using this gunner specialization I've run out of ammo. Then we have the rate of fire increase by 5% on kill for 5 seconds and we're already using the chameleon so that's a pretty fast fire rate I believe at 900 RPM as it is so we get 5% on top of that for each kill for 5 seconds and then you also have the 10% weapon handling while not moving. You need to be motionless for one second. This doesn't always come into play, but if you want to get those long beams, then standing still, this definitely comes into play and helps. And those are the main reasons I'm running the gunner specialization. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the main build. So of course, starting off with our primary weapon, it is the Chameleon. We have 15% assault rifle damage, 21% health damage, and 8% crit chance. If you guys want to go over the adaptive instincts talent, feel free to pause the video to look at it in greater detail. All you really want to know is that we gain 20% crit chance, 50% critical hit damage, and then 90% weapon damage. You also get a reload speed bonus. If you're really feeling good and you've got great aim and you want to get all three buffs at the same time, feel free. So let's go over the attachments real quick. We have 15% crit chance on the scope. We have 10% stability on the grip. We have 20% accuracy on the muzzle. And then for the magazine, we have the extra 20 rounds. Moving on to our secondary, and I'm using the FAMAS, which has 96.2k base damage, 900 RPM, 50 in a mag, 11 assault rifle damage, 13.5% health damage, 10% damage to targets out of cover, and we are using the talent killer, killing an enemy with a critical hit grants plus 40% critical hit damage for 10 seconds, and this is a talent that just keeps refreshing every time you kill with a crit. Looking at the attachments, crit chance on the scope, crit chance on the laser pointer, crit damage on the muzzle and then of course we have the extra rounds in the magazine 
Now that's out of the way, let's get into each piece of the build. So we have Negotiator's Dilemma, we are using a 4 piece, and on the mask we have 13.7% weapon damage, and then 12% crit damage, and a mod giving us 11.5% crit damage. Coming to our chest piece, which is the Walker Harris, weapon damage and damage to armor is what it offers us, both at 5%. I believe damage to armor is more applicable damage as well. We have 11.5% weapon damage, 10.7% critical hit damage, 6% crit chance, 12% critical hit damage via a mod, and of course, intimidate while you have bonus armor, amplifies total weapon damage by 35% to enemies within 10 meters. Moving on to the holster, 12.3% weapon damage and 12% critical hit damage. Onto the backpack, we have the Walker Harris backpack, 10.5% weapon damage, 12% critical hit damage, 8% weapon handling, if we had crit chance there, we would have max crit chance for our stats. Not that it matters though, because we gain 20% crit chance when we get the buffs up on the Chameleon anyway. And then we have 11.5% critical hit damage. So what you could also do guys, is you can pull off a couple of crit chance rolls on your build and replace that with some headshot damage. This will also help you get the um, headshot buff on a Chameleon a lot faster. Moving on to the gloves, negotiator's gloves, 13.9% weapon damage, 12% critical hit damage, and then finally knee pads at 14.8% weapon damage and 12% crit damage. So many places on this build that can be improved, it's not maxed out by any means, but this build absolutely shreds and it's a lot of fun. So looking at the skills, of course I'm running the Crusader shield, this isn't a must have, the shield does not make the build. There are other skills you can use. You can use Seeker Mines, which, you know, make the NPCs scatter. You can use a Firefly to blind them, although I wouldn't recommend that if you're going for, like, a speed run. Um, the Hive also makes NPCs scatter, so they're not fully concentrating on shooting on you. The Decoy is another great skill to use. Obviously, it distracts NPCs from you. It doesn't last long, though. Looking at our second skill, and, of course, it's a Striker Drone. I love this skill. I say it every video. It's just too good at what it does, distracting NPCs. It puts in a little bit of damage. As you can see, we have 7.5% deflect duration, um, only because I haven't got a duration mod. If I did, you'd put a duration mod there instead. The duration is already at 248 seconds, so it lasts a very long time as it is. The next mod is a 9.2% health mod, and then we have a 4.5% damage mod. Just go over the mods on the shield, and basically you just want to have shield health wherever you can get it. So 4.1%, 4.6%, and sadly we have 4.8% deflect damage, which doesn't contribute to this build. I'm not sure if you can get shield health there, but if I could, I would. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the build, guys. I'm going to go over the stat sheet, I'm not going to talk through it, just going to show you the raw stats. And the stats in the video, the stats on the thumbnail are all the buffs together, everything combined for those of you who get confused. Some people have um, a problem with basic maths, but what you do is you take these stats that are here and then you add the stats from the chameleon on top of that. It's not too hard to work out, but some people struggle. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave you with the stats, then a speed run, maybe some more gameplay. If you enjoyed this video, if you like this build, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash that like button to help support the channel and help us grow. We are so close to 15K subs. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, Mod Squad. Got a visual on additional hostiles in the memorial compound. They're moving south. There's a gate between you. It looks closed from here. Agent, you'll need to find a way to open that gate. Get back! Uh.
All clear. I repeat, the compound is all clear. Now that can't be all of them. Check the interior while I get Henry's people to maintain the perimeter. beneath you with increased security. Isaac can't access data on this location. Stay alert. I don't know what you're walking into. from getting more of those mortars. campus has taken position inside the memorial. If you hadn't stopped them, I know they would have used those weapons on us. You would have ended up like Castle. I can't tell you how relieved I am to have you on our side. Thank you. Today, we dealt a great blow to the True Sun's infrastructure. We confiscated a massive cache of chemical weapons and eliminated their stronghold near the campus. You should be proud. You saved a lot of lives today.